Drill music, especially the UK style of drill music, has surged in popularity as of late. And as a result of that, I've been fortunate enough to mix a number of songs that function in this genre. And one song that I mixed recently is Everything Ocean's A La Beke. And this song has done really well as of late. And a number of you guys have been requesting that I do a specific vocal chain breakdown of this song and just show you how I approached mixing it. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go in depth and explain each individual process. So I'm not going to explain exactly how I use compression or exactly how I use multiband compression or EQ. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link out to other videos that will explain these concepts further while I just do a little bit of a high level overview in terms of how I use them in this mix. That way, this video won't be a six hour phenomenon. Instead, it'll be nice and concise. And if you want to learn more, you can absolutely click out and do that. Now, with that being said, you might be wondering who I am. My name's Five Piece. I'm a producer and engineer based in Toronto, and I help music creators like you sound better and get paid for your music. So if you get value out of videos like this one, I definitely recommend you subscribe so you can see some more of my helpful content. Now with that in mind, we're going to talk about three specific things in this video. First, we're going to go over the actual vocal chain for a main vocal in this track. Next, we're going to talk about the vocal effects, the reverbs, delays, and other effects that I've implemented into this mix. And finally, I'm going to talk about my vocal master or my vocal bus, basically the subgroup where all of my vocal tracks go to and how I ultimately process that. Let's begin with a comparison. I'm gonna start by playing this track as is without my vocal chain, without my vocal effects, and without the processing on the vocal master. And I'm gonna put them all in and you can ultimately see exactly how what I did has affected the end result. So let's begin there. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey. Hey, hey, I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big I get the money in a lot big And I go bring it back, hey, hey. Hey. So hopefully you can hear how each step has ultimately increased the volume, increased the presence, and just the way that the vocal sits. Of course, we're affecting it with those effects as well, but you should be able to see the difference between where it started and ultimately where it ended. Now, the first plugin in the chain is a gate. I like to use the Wave C1 gate in particular, at least that's what I've been using on this track, but I'm ultimately using the gate to tighten up the performance and to reduce the bleed and background noise that might be happening while Oshawn is performing here. And you can see that I've actually manually gone in and removed a few moments here, right? Probably gaps of silence where he's not necessarily rapping or performing, but at the same time, I'm lazy. I've talked about this a lot on my other videos as well. And I'm using the gate to basically do this automatically for me. Instead of having to manually edit everything, the gate is ultimately going to clamp down and reduce the volume of some quieter moments like here, right? And there's definitely some headphone bleed at moments on this track. It's not really noticeable when the instrumental is playing, but when I solo it, you're going to be able to hear it. And this is ultimately going to help suppress those moments of headphone bleed that are happening at the same time. So let's quickly play this and I'm just going to put it in, take it out, and we'll just listen to see what the difference is. And it should be fairly subtle. Check this out. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. hey. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, eh? Hey. hey. So very subtle difference, like I said, but just tightening things up and again, reducing that background noise, that background presence that might be happening at times, whether it's headphone bleed, movement, rustling, clothes moving, stuff like that. It's going to help suppress that and keep it focused on the actual vocal performance itself. And you can tell when this is working because this red bar appears every time it's reducing the volume or the gain in this case, similar to a compressor, but a little bit different. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use a gate on your vocals, especially to clean things up in the same way that I am here, definitely check out my video, how to use a gate on vocals. I'll leave a link to it up above right now and in the description below. Next up, we have EQ, and I'm specifically using the filter on a Pro Q3. The Pro Q3 is one of my favorite EQs that I like to use. And typically, I also do some sort of reduction, some resonant reduction, if there is particularly frequency resonances that are just poking out a little bit too much. But I guess that wasn't really an issue when I was mixing this. However, I did want to reduce some of the low end, which I typically do on a vocal, because the low end on a vocal is not always necessary. You might notice this when you're in a solo mode 
mode situation where that low end feels very important. But when you have a track with bass and drums and all kinds of elements, especially on the drill side of things where those elements are extremely important for driving the groove, you're going to want to filter that out. And what that'll do is it'll allow the vocal to not compete with those elements as much. And then at the same time, it'll help clean the vocal up because this low end is usually responsible for muddiness and a lack of clarity. So by doing that, you're going to ultimately clean your vocal up and maybe even have a little bit more headroom because these low frequencies eat up a lot of headroom. So you'll be able to actually turn up your vocal later and just have it sit better in the mix overall without clashing with these other more important elements that should be dominating that low end. I'm getting rid of about 94 hertz and below. So this is really sub frequencies. I'm going to solo this and play it and you can actually listen and see exactly what I'm removing. I get the money in a lab of I get the money in a lab of and I go bring me back over. Hey, hey. So you can hear exactly what we're getting rid of there. Let me now play this one more time. I'm going to bypass this and put it in. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back over. Hey, hey. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back over. Hey, hey. Hey. So you may actually have had a hard time even hearing the difference there. That's really what this is about. We're not trying to have a huge night and day difference. All we're trying to do is just tighten things up a little bit, create a little bit more headroom and prevent that congestion from happening that I'm talking about. If you're curious about how exactly to implement an EQ on your vocals, how to clean things up, especially, I'm gonna leave a link to another video up above right now and the description below. Next up, we have compression. And I like to use the CLA-2A in this case. This is an LA-2A, an optical style compressor. And it's really simple. It's just two knobs, peak reduction and gain. I like the simplicity there. These compressors typically already have a slower attack and release time, which will create a more transparent sounding effect. It doesn't always work on everything, but it works really well on vocals. And if you're using waves, I like to turn off the analog because this is just adding a little bit of noise that is completely unnecessary. The goal of this is really to bridge the gap between the loud and the quiet stuff. You can see there's a lot of dynamics here. There's moments that are louder, moments that are quieter. And this compressor is ultimately going to make them a little bit more uniform in volume. It's going to glue things together, as people say and ultimately just achieve a more cohesive sound that'll help it cut better on all kinds of listening devices, big and small, and just really sit better in the mix as a whole. So check this out. I'll take it out, put it in. Let's see exactly what it's doing. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. Hey. So hopefully you can hear the difference here. It's definitely coming up a little bit more of the vocal. It's a little bit more forward, easier to hear. And I'm not going to lie, I'm probably a little bit more heavy handed with the gain than I should have been. You're seeing we're getting about a 1 dB of gain reduction. So we're not losing the most amount of volume. It's just shaving off a little bit of those peaks, but really adding a lot of volume back to everything as a whole. And while that's not always the most recommended strategy, it seemed to work in this case and it hasn't really affected the song. It's been added to tons of playlists, been playing on radio. It's been even getting bumped at the Scotiabank Arena arena by four corners at Raptors games. So if it's good enough for an NBA team with a stadium of 20,000 fans, it's probably going to be okay. I'm not going to think about it too hard at the end of the day because it worked here. And if you want to learn more about compression, because I really glossed over these parameters, definitely check out my video, how to compress vocals. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. Once again, next up, we have multiband compression. And this is one of my favorite tools to use. You might have noticed that when I actually did that last step of compression, it sort of changed the frequency spectrum a little bit. And what it does, I find is it typically enhances or increases the low end, especially that muddy kind of range of 100 to 300, let's say, quite a bit. And that's not always good. We don't always need that to have a bigger resonant boost, right? So what I'm doing here with this multiband is I'm dynamically reducing the low frequency. And for my specific situation here, I have 600 hertz all the way down to 30 hertz sort of sectioned off here. And this is being reduced by upwards of 3 dB, although I don't think it's that much. I have a very quick attack, a very quick release, a four to one ratio. And ultimately, this is going to be bringing down this area and hopefully smoothing out the excessive low end that that previous step of regular compression might have added. So let's actually check this out. I'll bypass it and put it in. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lab of K. I get the money in a lab of K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. Hey. So ultimately, you can hear that it's just smoothing things over, right? It's definitely taking that low end that I felt was becoming a little bit too pronounced and squashing it a little bit, but doing it in a dynamic way. It's not constantly reducing it like you would with an EQ. Instead, whenever this band is too present, whenever it passes the threshold that I've set up, it ultimately reduces that band and helps create this more smooth sounding aesthetic that we're getting out of the vocal. And multiband compression is one of my favorite strategies to smooth things over more so than an EQ. In fact, I have a video all about that called Why Multiband Compression. 
compression is better than EQ. I'll plug that up above right now and down below. And of course, if you want to learn more about how to use multiband compression on your vocal tracks, I'll leave another video down there all about that. Next up, we have saturation. Now I am using the stock lo-fi plugin from Avid. This is the one that comes with Pro Tools, but you can absolutely use things like decapitator, saturation knob. There's all kinds of great plugins out there that could do exactly what I'm doing here. But the thinking and goal of this is in the previous steps, we sort of suppressed the low end a bit. We increased it, obviously with the first step of compression, then we reduced it with the multiband compression. And sometimes I find what ends up happening is it gets a little bit more flat, right? Sometimes it's not always the most ideal, but we need to tame that area. So now with saturation, we're now going to sort of undo that one more time. And as you can see here, this is obviously a balancing act where I sort of do these very small moves and just keep changing or altering the vocal sound over time. But this saturation here that I'm applying is ultimately going to warm up the vocal. It's going to create some new harmonic content based on what I'm feeding into it. So it's going to essentially look at the vocal and say, okay, this is what the frequencies make up this sound. Let's sort of enhance these specific fundamentals and kind of increase the presence of them at the same time. And what ultimately happens is you almost get this warmer, fuller, more body kind of sound. And it almost does what an EQ would do, but in a more natural way, because it's looking at the harmonics that you're feeding into it and then creating more based on that. So ultimately, let's play this and check this out, see what kind of difference it's making. I'll take it out and put it in. I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big I get the money in a lot, big And I go bring it back, eh? Hey. 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 So definitely just warming it up, making it a little bit more round, so to speak, a little bit more bite, a little bit more edge. And I'm doing a very subtle move. I'm adding 0.1 of distortion, 0.1 of saturation. These are the, basically the smallest moves you could possibly make with this plugin. And I find it does just enough in this case, especially. And if you want to learn more about how to use saturation on your vocal tracks, I have a video where I use not only this plugin, but two other ones, free and premium slash paid. And I walk you through exactly how I would use each one how I would think about it, why I would use it, how I would set it up to ultimately achieve a fuller, warmer vocal sound. So definitely check those out. I'll leave a link to it down below and up above right now. Following saturation, we have EQ. Yes, EQ again. I don't always do all my EQ moves in one single step. I'll break them out over different steps over time. And that's what I'm doing in this case, the previous step of EQ. I really just use the filter, although sometimes I will definitely go in and clean up any frequency resonances that I hear. I didn't in this case, but then on the second step, I'm doing an additive move. And you can see I'm doing something pretty crazy here. I've got 12K and I'm adding seven and a half dB. Now, just a low key tip, the Slick EQ, which is a free plugin, one of my favorite free plugins, by the way, you can add a lot of gain with this plugin and it's very smooth. It's not gonna distort. It's not gonna do anything weird that you might experience with some other plugins if you do the exact same thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they did when engineering this plugin, but it's just fantastic, especially at boosting high end. In fact, I'll use this over premium plugins, over a Pultec, over a lot of other plugins that I paid 200 plus dollars for, and it's a free tool. So definitely check this out if you haven't yet, but let's check out what this is doing. I'm adding seven and a half at 12K, and this is really just going to enhance, brighten, and sweeten the overall vocal sound, make it a little bit more clear, a little bit more high end, and ultimately just sweeter in the process. So check this out. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. Hey. Right, you can definitely hear it. A little bit more bite, a little bit more sizzle, a little bit more air, right? But overall, it's definitely helping that vocal sit more. And especially when I put it into context, you're gonna be able to hear that this really stands out on top of the track. It's definitely something that adds and enhances here. And if you wanna learn more about how to specifically boost frequencies with an EQ, okay? Emphasis on boosting frequencies and not necessarily the surgical stuff that I talked about before. I'm gonna leave a link to another video in the description below all about how to specifically boost frequencies with an EQ. The best way to do that, how I like to approach it. So definitely check that out if you need some more help in this area. But wait, there's more, more EQ. In fact, we're gonna do the next step, which is dynamic EQ. This is where I'm really solving some of those resonant issues that I was mentioning before. I didn't necessarily treat them earlier on in this mix for whatever reason, but in this case, towards the end of the chain, I'm absolutely going in and I'm specifically using a dynamic EQ here to reduce these frequencies. So this is about 500 Hertz and around 15,000 Hertz. And both of them are coming down very slightly. This 15, 
16,000, upwards of 1 dB, okay? And it's gonna depend, this is dynamic, so it's gonna be happening when it passes the threshold that I've set. And then this 500, I'm doing a little bit more aggressively, not too much though, but by minus two. So it's obviously coming down by somewhere around minus two once it passes the threshold. So let's actually solo this and just play each of these frequencies so we can hear exactly what I'm taming or reducing. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. So that's the 500. You can definitely hear it's a lot of that real presence and low end presence, especially. I felt like it was just a little bit too much, probably. Let's check out 15,000. A little bit more of that sizzle, right? And of course, I've probably aggravated that sizzle with the previous step, right? With that boost step that I did with the Tokyo Dawn Labs EQ there. But, you know, I ultimately want to tame that with this dynamic EQ, and that's why I'm doing it. So now let's actually bypass this dynamic EQ as a whole. Let's put it in. And overall, just listen and pay attention to if this sounds smoother, a little bit less aggressive, a little less piercing, or a little less resonant in general. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. Hey. So this move is really doing a lot of work here. You can hear how it's really smoothing things over. It's not allowing it to be so present, especially in these two specific frequency pockets that I've identified here. And dynamic EQ is just an amazing thing. It's this combination of EQ and compression, not too dissimilar from multiband compression, although it is a little bit inferior. Definitely watch that video about why multiband compression is better than EQ if you have a chance to understand why specifically. But if you need to learn more about dynamic EQ, check out my video all about that. I'll leave a link to it up above. And in the description below. And the final step of this vocal chain is a limiter. And I'm probably not slamming this limiter like you would typically. What I'm doing is I'm using the limiter to simply increase the overall volume of the track. And yes, I realize you could do that with the fader, but I wanna use this to ultimately increase the volume of the track by one dB, a very tiny amount. And at the same time, if there is any clipping that's gonna take place, if this vocal is a little bit too loud at any given point and starts to clip or pass zero, this limiter is gonna keep it in check. I'm not sure if that's really happening, to be honest, on this track but I like to sometimes put a limiter at the end of my vocal tracks just as a safety net. Hopefully that makes sense, but I have an out ceiling of 0.3, so I have 0.3 dB of headroom from digital zero, so it's gonna never clip. It's gonna prevent it from clipping by that amount of headroom. I have a one millisecond look ahead time, a very slow attack, very fast release. I'm using the transparent style in this case on this FabFilter Pro L, and then I have a one dB gain that I'm adding here in this particular case. So just a very slight move, slight enhancement, shouldn't really make a a huge difference, but let's see. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey, hey. It's just making the average volume a little bit louder, a little bit more consistent, definitely changing the frequency balance ever so slightly, usually imparting a little bit more of the high end, a little bit less of the low end. So with the vocal chain out of the way, let's now talk about vocal effects, reverbs, delays, things of that nature. And the truth is I was actually provided with a number of these effects that were just printed audio tracks. So XP, O'Shawn's brother, he typically records his music and then I'm the one that mixes it. And in this case, they actually provided me with two reverbs and a delay. However, I did of course add my own effects as well. I'll quickly give you an overview of what they gave me. So these are their tracks right here, these three. Let's first look at the delay. The delay is like a shorter, quick delay, like an eighth note, maybe something like that. I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit noisy, but check this out. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. Hey. So super subtle, just adding a little bit of a bounce, right? Next, they have two reverbs. The first reverb is a bit more of a shorter, maybe a plate type of reverb. I'm obviously not 100% sure what I was provided with here. I'm just sort of guessing based on what I'm hearing. But check this out. I'll solo the reverb on its own first. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey. Hey. Right, so super subtle, very quick, not so lingering like a lot of reverbs are. But the thing is, the second reverb effect, or the third effect overall they provided, is another reverb, but this one's definitely a lot more lingering-like, right? So check this out. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. 
I get now you can hear how it's lingering a lot more in the background and of course that's a good thing in this case I like how it's creating this really cool ghostly almost ambience constantly floating in the background there and I know I am just soloing the one vocal track but there's obviously ad libs and other things that are going to it I just want to provide a little bit of context so you can hear exactly how it's affecting that main vocal now that being said let's talk about the effects that I actually applied to this track now the first thing I applied was a slap delay now the slap delay is generally enhancing the width of the track it's kind of putting it more into the stereo field and it's creating this really fast not really typical pattern okay it's a very specific sound I find slap delays don't always work it really depends but if you want to have it sound like somebody's sort of yelling on a megaphone or just projecting at a concert where there's a little bit of a delay but it's not a perfect pattern like an eighth note or a quarter note a slap delay is a good go-to so let me play the slap ah, I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. and I go bring it back hey 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 I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. and I go bring it back hey 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 just enhancing that width, creating this really cool and different effect using the Echo Boy Junior. I'm really using the 15 IPS Studio Slap Wide preset. Probably adjusted some of the parameters, but it doesn't really matter what you're using, it's about the intention. After the slap delay, I applied a plate reverb. And while I was provided with two reverbs, I felt like it wasn't enough. I wanted to add a little bit of my own that I could control a little bit better. So that's what I did here. Now in this case, I'm using the UAD EMT 140. This is one of my go-tos. You've definitely seen me use it in some of my past videos. I I seem to use the gold plated preset and I of course adjusted some of the parameters. I always mess with the EQ, I mess with the mix, I mess with the input filter, I do all that stuff. And not only that, I generally follow it up with an EQ where I'm rolling off some of the lows and some of this other low stuff. In fact, I did that also on the Echo Boy here in that previous step with the slap. I'm filtering out some low end because really these effects, we don't wanna have a whole lot of low end. It's gonna bloat the track and just make it really, really muddy. So in this case, let's see what the reverb is doing. I'm gonna mute the slap so there's no interference. So we could just hear these one by one and let's just see what it sounds like with and without this plate reverb ah, i get the money in a lot big k i get the money in a lot big k and i go bring it back hey 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 i get the money in a lot big k i get the money in a lot big k and i go bring it back hey 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 I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. So you can really hear how it just totally changes the sound, right? Definitely drenching it in that reverb, giving you this really ambient effect. And that seemed to be okay in this particular case. But of course, use your judgment. You don't always want to use reverb because sometimes it'll wash out your sounds, push them into the background. And if you want to see a great video on how you should be thinking about applying reverb and some tips to be mindful of as you do so, definitely check out my reverb tips video. I'll leave that in the description below. Now, truthfully, that was all the effects that I personally applied applied to this mix in this case. However, I will sometimes apply my own delays and other effects, delays especially though, but because I was given some and because of the nature of this track was very quick, it just didn't feel appropriate for me to add that stuff. However, if you want to learn more about delays, I'll leave a video in the description below all about my favorite delay tips and how you should think about applying that in your own tracks. So with that being said, we can now talk about the vocal master bus. Now this is where all the individual vocal tracks go, including the effects and how they all combine. So we're not really focused on adjusting one specific thing, one specific vocal or one specific sound, but rather the totality of all these sounds and how they add up and combine with one another and how they ultimately combine with the instrumental to then the final master. So this is almost like one step before the final master, right? That being said, let's talk about this really quickly and how exactly I approach this. So the first thing I applied was another EQ, in this case, an MS EQ. And I'm using the digital V3 here. You've definitely seen that in some of my mastering videos. I've talked about using this plug-in and I'm really affecting the mid and the sides channel or the mono and stereo section as they call it here. I'm affecting them uniquely and differently from one another and specifically doing some filtering. I'm filtering out upwards of 20 hertz on the mono side, upwards of 90 hertz on the stereo side and I'm even going in and taking out specific frequencies. So just under 2k for example or just over 12k, I'm reducing those two frequencies ever so slightly. So let's actually see what this sounds like. Well, ah. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot big K. I get the money in a lot big K. And I go bring it back, hey. Nothing too crazy. 
pretty straightforward stuff. And this is always gonna depend on the vocal that you have, but I'm always doing some sort of filtering just to sort of sculpt the sound and focus it a little bit more. And then if there's any overwhelming resonances as vocals combine, I'll use this. However, it might be more advisable to use something like a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor. So that way you're not just statically getting rid of a frequency, but rather getting rid of it only when it becomes a problem. Next up, I have a compressor and I'm specifically using the UAD Fatso Senior. This is one of my favorite compressors, especially for this purpose. It definitely warms up a sound. It's a character compressor, very similar to a distressor in a way. You're going to get a very specific sound here, especially if you like a more edgy kind of vocal. It's got a built-in transistor, so I'm able to impart some of that low-end level. It's going to warm up the sound really when you apply it, right? Let's actually check this out. I'm using this just to even out the peaks once again, not too dissimilar from how I approach the individual vocal and just glue everything together, all the different sounds because ad-libs and different vocal takes may not necessarily be perfectly uniform in volume, even though I set them obviously manually. And this is obviously going to bridge the gap between all of those things and make them just sound more in line with one another and glue together once again, but while imparting a specific sonic or harmonic characteristic. So I'll take it out. I'll put it in. Check it out. Well, I, I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. Hey, hey, I get the money in the lab, I get the money in the lab, and I go bring it back, hey, 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 hey. I get the money in the lab, I get the money in the lab, and I go bring it back, hey, oh. So definitely warming up the sound, filling out the body, making it just feel a lot more full. I've set this up like I typically would with a slower attack, a faster release, and then balancing my input, output, and threshold to get somewhere between one to two dB of compression, okay? So I'm not going crazy slamming it here and just getting what I want to get out of it. And obviously it's working. Things are sounding more balanced, more glued together. And of course, fuller, which is the key approach to using this compressor in this purpose. Now, following the compressor, we have dynamic EQ. Again, this is to build on that first step of EQ where I did some filtering and some sculpting. Now I'm doing it on a more dynamic basis where if something, some frequency is just poking out too much, we're going to reduce it, tame it, and just glue things together a little bit better, but without doing it in a static way where it's completely sucking the life out of something consistently the entire time. So in this case, I've got two frequencies. I got 175 and I've got about 5,800 Hertz, let's say, and they're both being reduced by upwards of 2 dB. Now they may not necessarily be reducing it by that much, but that's just the maximum volume we could be losing here. And let's actually just play this and I'll just solo each frequency so we can hear exactly what we're losing. So definitely that low end, maybe boominess or boxiness that we don't really need. Maybe even that mud, right? But just taming that a little bit. And then the high end, we got this. And that one's definitely more of the sizzle, the sibilance, you know, some of that piercing frequency that we don't really want to have a whole lot of, or at least just clamp down and tame a little bit. So of course we're taking care of both of these and let's actually see what this is doing overall and how it's affecting the track. Well, I, I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, eh, hey, hey. So definitely cleaning up that low end, especially this low band. I really hear the difference by putting this in the high band. It's just smoothing it out a little bit, but you could just hear how this is sounding a lot cleaner, a lot less muddy as a result of this dynamic band. Now, following that dynamic EQ, we have something kind of similar, and that's a dynamic resonance suppressor. Really, I'm using Sooth 2 here. There's very few plugins in this category, and this is not a plugin I use all the time. However, I have shot some videos on it. So if you want to learn how to use this plugin and what it does, definitely check out my Sooth 2 video. I'll leave a link to it up above and in the description below, but ultimately this is just going in and finding very specific frequencies automatically, by the way, while I have sort of pushed it into a certain direction, this is automatically detecting specific problematic frequencies and reducing them. Now, keep in mind, I have my mix set to a very low number. It's not really going to be getting rid of stuff very drastically. You can see it's going to do a max reduction of a half of a dB. Okay. Very, very subtle. And really, let's just see what it's doing. I'll even show you exactly what it's getting rid of. So let's actually hear what it's getting rid of first. This is the Delta. So really focused between these higher frequency areas, you know, so I have between about 1K and 16K. And again, very subtle, not getting rid of a lot of stuff. Let me actually put it in again. And let's actually hear now because we just listened to the Delta. That's what's being removed. Let's hear what it actually is doing and how it's affecting the actual sound. Well, 
I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey. I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, eh? Hey, hey, hey. So it's almost like this imperceptible difference, if I'm being honest. It's not the biggest move that I've ever made here, but it's definitely just cleaning things up a little bit, especially in that 1,000 to 16K, especially in that one to 5K area. You see there is certain moves, certain reductions that are taking place automatically. that are just cleaning this up and just making the sound sound a little bit more sculpted, a little bit more focused and a little less emphasized in that higher range. Now, the second last plugin I have in the vocal master slot is a multi-band compressor. And I'm definitely using this again, like a, EQ in a way. You can see I'm actually doing some boosting and a lot of reductions, but also some boosts even on the low end. So specifically I have from 600 Hertz to 30 Hertz, the same kind of range that I had on the individual vocal. I have that sectioned off. Let's actually see what this sounds like first. I get the money in a lab, okay? I get the money in a lab, okay? And I go bring it back, hey, hey. So definitely like a lot of that muddy kind of frequency, right? So I want to tame that a little bit, but without killing it. Because if you overdo taming this area, what's going to happen is your vocal is going to sound way too thin. I still want it to sound warm and have the body in the presence, but I ultimately want to just reduce it and even it out a bit, right? And what's actually happening here, if I change my view mode to three, you can see they're adding about a 0.5 dB increase here. But then at the same time, we're actually getting upwards of a 1 dB loss. So I'm just compensating for that loss that's happening. That's just evening things out. And of course, still keeping it warm and present and full of that body. Now, up on the top band here, we have between 4,000 and 12,000 sectioned off. This is definitely going to be more sibilance kind of area. And you can see that I'm getting rid of upwards of 1 dB. That's where the range is set here. So let's check this out. I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, okay? Hey, hey. So it's a very subtle reduction in this area, definitely a sibilant kind of area, but you could hear it's actually affecting other kind of consonants. You hear like the K words kind of coming down a little bit, but overall, just anything that's going to poke out too much and just be a little bit too aggressive or sharp on the ears, it's taming it in this specific range because we're very sensitive. Humans are very sensitive to this area as well. Now, finally, on the top end, I have from 12,000 and above sectioned off, and you can see here I'm actually adding a positive range. So I'm actually doing something called upward compression. This is something I've talked about in a few of my videos. I'll plug some of those down below right now but basically what's happening is it's working in a different way from standard compression what i mean is instead of having a sound and being it being reduced right away from zero what's happening is we're actually boosting the sound first and then anything that is not benefiting from that boost and that's essentially too loud is then getting reduced down to zero so in a weird way this is essentially like an eq move where i'm boosting a frequency but anything that is excessively loud and shouldn't be boosted because of its excessive loudness is getting reduced back down to zero so it's really only boosting the things that can afford to be boosted without killing stuff without clipping for example and then everything else of course is staying at zero it's not really being enhanced in any sort of way this is a really cool way to just add a high-end boost without potentially creating some problems like clipping and i absolutely recommend you check out my upward compression video for that reason if you're unfamiliar with this topic that being said let's see what this frequency is exactly So you definitely hear what that frequency is. Definitely that high-end air, right? And now let's do a full A-B comparison. I'll bypass this multi-band compressor and put it in. Let's hear what it's doing. It should be smoothing things over all together and then just again, enhancing that high-end pocket that we've identified. Well, I, I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, hey, hey. I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, hey, hey. Hey, hey, I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, hey, 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 hey. I get the money in the lab, okay? I get the money in the lab, okay? And I go bring it back, hey, hey. So it's definitely smoothing things over. It's making it sound a lot less dark and a lot more full and definitely a lot more high end in the process. So of course this thing is doing exactly what I need it to do. Now the final plugin in my vocal master bus chain is a limiter. And I'm probably not gonna be using this in a traditional way like a lot of people would like. Again, this is very similar to when I used it on that individual channel. And I'm using this limiter for a few specific reasons. Number one, I wanna use it to bridge the gap in volume between the actual acapella and the instrumental. My instrumental is limited and by applying some 
limiting to the acapella as well, it's gonna help the two sit better together. If you have one thing that's really limited and one thing that isn't, they're just not really gonna blend. It's always gonna feel like one is either louder or quieter than the other, but by limiting both, even if you're not using a limiter in a traditional way, you're gonna get those two to sit better together. This is something that I've talked about in my three tips for mixing vocals over two track beats video. I'm adding a one dB increase and I'm also using the dynamic mode here. So that way there's still some dynamics being preserved here. You can hear the difference in volume between different sections. I have a very slow attack, a very fast release, a one millisecond look ahead time and a 0.3 dB ceiling. So of course we're preventing the vocal from clipping if it even gets close. Now, of course I want to do this gently. I'm not really looking to actually get any peak reduction. I'm really just trying to add this volume, but then by doing this, I'm limiting it so that it sits better with the instrumental once again. So I'm adding the volume, I'm getting the benefit of that, I'm preventing it from clipping, I'm getting the benefit of that. And then of course, I'm just bridging that gap in volume once again, so it sits and plays nice, so to speak, with the instrumental. Let me bypass this limiter, and then let's put it in, let's see the difference that it is making. Well, I, I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey, hey. I get the money in a lot, big K. I get the money in a lot, big K. And I go bring it back, hey, hey. Now I know that the way I use this limiter is going to be controversial for some. I'm not using it in a traditional way. I am obviously preventing clipping, but we're not really even getting close to clipping at all. Instead, what I'm really doing is just using this to drive up the volume a little bit. And should I get close to clipping, I'm gonna prevent that. This limiter, it creates a different sonic effect from just turning up the fader. While you might be able to match the volume on both sides, this limiter is going to process the vocal track or whatever you're applying it to in its own unique way. It's gonna affect the harmonic content in its own unique way. And you could hear it in this case for sure because the low end and the body of the vocal just comes up a little bit more in a way that is not the same as if I were to just turn up the volume by 1 dB. While that is ultimately what I'm getting out of this and I'm not really getting any traditional limiting here, I'm still satisfied with the results and I encourage you to experiment and try this on your own to see if you can yield something similar. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please tap that like button until it turns blue. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can see some more of my helpful content. I drop something like this every single week, always focused on helping you sound better and helping you make more money with your music. And if you want to see anything in a future video, leave it in the comments below so I can create something specifically for you. I appreciate y'all for watching once again, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, peace. Bye. Bye.